And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett and Kent Myers wishing you a Merry Christmas. Glad you're here. We're here every week meeting interesting people and talking about topical issues. And we've got a very important person coming in today to see us. Indeed. Lieutenant Governor Jerry Askins is coming back to visit with us again to let us know what's going on at the Capitol and in her world of uh, Lieutenant Governorship. <laughs> and we're always pleased to have her. And by the way, Merry Christmas to you and your family. Thank you. And I hope our uh, visitors uh, uh, that we have on uh, today, uh, Governor Askins, will have a Merry Christmas as well as our uh, viewers. No shortage of things to talk about this morning. We'll get to it. Governor Jerry Askins next on The Verdict. Everyday America uses clean burning natural gas instead of coal or oil is a day of victory for our environment. That's why Chesapeake chose to explore for natural gas exclusively, and we've never looked back. Because natural gas burns twice as clean as oil or coal, and reducing carbon emissions to combat potential global warming is every bit as urgent as cutting our dependence on energy imports. As America's number one driller of new gas wells, Chesapeake is moving fast to find untapped reserves of natural gas here at home. It's the right fuel for America's economy and the fuel for a clean air future. We just happen to be early to see it so clearly. Chesapeake, natural gas wins the day. Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma working with the owners of small and medium sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. Wilsey Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're very pleased to welcome back to The Verdict uh, the Honorable uh, Jerry Askins, the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Oklahoma. Uh, Governor Askins did her undergraduate and law work at the University of Oklahoma. She served as uh, a judge. She served in the House of Representatives as Chairman of the Pardon and Parole uh, Commission. Uh, she was elected Lieutenant Governor in 2006. She's the first Democratic woman to uh, hold that post. Uh, she, has, uh, we, she was selected for the uh, Oklahoma Hall of Fame in 2001, and we're just pleased you'd come back and visit with us again. Thank you very much. I always appreciate the invitation, and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah. Welcome back to the show. First of all, thanks for uh, giving up the time to come over here. Um, let's talk about uh, two years in office now, uh, yeah. reflections on those two years and how, you, how, how well you like or dislike the job. Well, you know, people ask me all the time, do you enjoy your job? And, I just consider it such a, a great honor to get to serve Oklahoma. I love this state. I love the opportunity to help promote tourism in my role as Lieutenant Governor and Chair of the Tourism Commission. I love the opportunity to travel around the state and visit with uh, civic clubs and chambers of commerce and talk to them about what some of our small towns are doing successfully to continue their economic growth and, and to be able to try to help pass those ideas along to others. I know one of the big responsibilities you have is tourism mm -hmm. and recreation in Oklahoma. Tell us how that's going as you see it. As I came into the office of Lieutenant Governor, there were already um, work uh, on play uh, to try to change some of the things that the state of Oklahoma was doing with its uh, uh, tourism facilities. For example, there was already uh, an RFP that had been accepted uh, for private development down at Lake Texoma, and so we are monitoring that, trying to make certain that uh, 
what happens down there is good for Oklahoma, but also that the state continues to provide a state park presence down there. We're working on replacement land so that we can uh, provide camping facilities and, and park opportunities for Oklahoma citizens. At the same time, we're also involved in, an, in a new facility at Lake Murray, which is Oklahoma's oldest state park. Mm -hmm. And we have a, a public-private partnership, if you would, with um, the Ardmore Tourism Authority, which is kind of under the umbrella of Ardmore Chamber of Commerce Economic Development. And I believe we'll see a new lodge there and then refurbishing of the old lodge uh, and refurbishing of the cabins that exist. So it's it's a different way of, of trying to upgrade the facilities that we have for recreational use in Oklahoma. Let me ask you, uh, at one time Oklahoma had several state lodges uh, that it was owning and, uh, and running for the benefit of the mm -hmm. citizens. Uh, how many do we have and where are they? You know, right now we have really reduced the number that we have. Yeah. People still think of Quartz Mountain as being under the state of a tourism department, but it's actually under the uh, authority of the State Regents for Higher Education, a move that was made a number of years ago by the legislature, be mostly because of the Summer Arts Institute and some of the educational programming that goes on out there. We no longer have Fountainhead, we no longer have Arrowhead, we no longer have Lake Texoma, and we will have Lake Murray under a lease agreement. So that leaves us places like Roman Nose, it leaves us a lodging at Western Hills, um, it leaves us uh, r lodging down at Beaver's Bend in, in some areas that we think um, that the state can continue to make investment in, totally upgrade the facilities that we have there, make them appropriate for uh, your family and my family and, and the uh, Oklahomans that don't want to have to travel so mm -hmm. far to have time off. How is the tourism business going as far as bringing people from other states into Oklahoma? You know, we're still collecting data for clearly for 2008, but the advertising that we were able to kind of latch on to, piggyback with from the centennial, has certainly allowed us to showcase Oklahoma in a different way, not just around the country, but globally. We know that we continue to have inquiries that come in from Germany, from uh, other countries that where they want to come to Oklahoma, they want to, Route 66 is a big draw, and of course the largest stretch of that, the most miles of the Mother Road is within the state of Oklahoma. In fact, I was on a, a, a trade mission with a, a visit to Japan in November, and one of the questions when we were visiting at the U.S. Embassy was, uh, the Japanese government wanted to help encourage tourism to Oklahoma and Route 66 was something they were interested in. So we continue to promote areas of interest, uh, not just you know to uh, other uh, Americans across the country, but uh, uh, across the world as well. And, and so I think we're seeing a, kind of a, a renewed interest and that's why you're seeing communities all along the Route 66 area uh, try to do things to upgrade their museums, upgrade their attractions, because they know they continue to draw visitors from all over the world. Let me ask you, I think I've been to most of the state lodges except one, mm -hmm. and that's the one I want to ask you about, the Beaver's Bend. What's, what's there? I know it's a beautiful part of the state, but uh, what kind of state facility is there? You know, the lodge that we have there is, is really nice. In fact, the Tourism Commission met down in, um, at Beaver's Bend in October. When we're not in session, we try to, when the legislature's not in session, the commission tries to meet several places around the state so that we can get a better feel for what is actually out there and what our responsibilities uh, are involving. Down at Beaver's Bend, it's, it's a wonderful adventure area. Uh, clearly there's fishing, there's uh, lots of water activities, not just on the lake, but uh, it's an area down in McCurtain County where there's trout fishing. A lot of people don't realize in Oklahoma that you can do that. Um, so whether it's, whether it's canoeing or large houseboats uh, and recreation that way, there's a lot of agritourism in the area that I think people are not yet understanding Oklahoma offers, whether it's wineries or other opportunities that exist in, in a rural area that aren't just adventure. Um, but it's a beautiful part of the state in the fall. It's the, it's the highlighted area for the fall foliage tour through the Talamina Drive, which is just north of, of Beaver's Bend. So there's a lot of opportunity. Mm -hmm. State revenue, how's it coming in here as we reach the, the midway point of the fiscal year? You know, actually, um, December 22nd, we will be meeting. I think it's either, I think it's the 22nd uh, or the 29th. We will be meeting with the Board of Equalization to give the first estimate, the first certification of revenues um, for the uh, FY 2010. 
and it will be the number that the governor will use to base his budget on. So we are, um, you know, we don't yet have the numbers that are going to be presented to us because they kind of work. The uh, Department of State Finance works with the Tax Commission in coming up with the formula uh, to tell us. But um, we're still waiting to see whether or not the shopping after Thanksgiving was good in Oklahoma. As stores seem to indicate, many of them, that they had more shoppers, but whether the whether the sales were so low that the revenue actually increased, mm -hmm. we've not yet been told. Well, so. it does seem like there's more discounting in this Christmas mm -hmm. season than I've seen, but the parking lots are full in, in the shopping malls, you and know, so you don't really know how to gauge that. I don't see a lot of difference in the terms of the vehicles that are out there. I think people are looking for deals, and I think they're shopping wisely. Uh, the good news is in Oklahoma, we have not yet been hit as hard. There are people who are struggling in Oklahoma. There are people who are impacted by what's happening across this country in terms of the economy and businesses that are laying off. But we are fortunate to have so many people that are much more stable in their housing market, that are much more stable in their jobs. And so if I'm a retailer, I'm grateful that I'm in Oklahoma because I have a chance of at least maintaining, a greater chance of maintaining a, a stable and a solid uh, Christmas holiday season. Mm -hmm. Let me follow up on that point you just made because you were reading my mind as you were giving that answer. But it seems to me that if, if I'm a national retailer with stores mm -hmm. all over the country and, my, and the economy in Oklahoma seems to be doing better than uh, many of the surrounding or, or other national economies. Uh, that would push me toward keeping my store open in Oklahoma where it has a good shot at succeeding, mm -hmm. which in the long run can, it seems to me, pay big dividends for the state. Well, I think How do you see that? I think you're exactly right. And unfortunately, I mean, one of the things that we saw last year as uh, the economies on the east and west coast began to decline, we saw a drop even in Oklahoma in our revenues that come from corporate tax. It's the one area that, that has more of an impact um, by what happens across the country than what happens in Oklahoma because most of those corporations work in multiple states. And so how their business is, is uh, impacted in, uh, on the East Coast or the West Coast does collaterally have an impact on mm -hmm. the corporate tax in Oklahoma. But as we, but I'm like you, if, if their sales are stable or showing less impact than other places, I think it's a great opportunity for city leaders like the mayor, for the state leaders, um, to be able to say, you know, let's point out that you know what's working here um, needs to be kept here, and, and it'll help your business as well as help our people. Let me jump in and get us to our first break. We're visiting with Sherry Askin. <laughs> she is the lieutenant governor for the state of Oklahoma. More on the verdict right after this. I'm Dr. Suzanne Van Kooten, a research hydrometeorologist at National Severe Storms Lab, and I'm a Chickasaw. There's a stewardship there, I think, that's within Native Americans and the protectionist of the land that are we going to leave things better than when we came in that came across in how I did my job. I had a true passion for it because I realized that this was what we had always done. We'd always been so involved with the land and taking care of the land, but also taking care of people. So that is truly the stream that you go down as a meteorologist. You want to protect lives and property. The Chickasaw Nation does an amazing job with our education programs. There are no excuses for you not to succeed as a Chickasaw in education. That's fundamental. That's fundamental to the success of the nation is this education aspect because knowledge literally is power. That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a plug nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, and our guest, Lieutenant Governor Jerry Askins. 
Uh, Governor, let me ask you a question, that kind of a follow-up to what we were talking about in the first segment. It seems to me that uh, we've had people on over the years talking about recruiting a business to come into Oklahoma, uh, and I know that uh, probably the expansion nationwide is not the, on the forefront of most business people's minds right now, but it seems to me that Oklahoma has an extra arrow in its economic uh, quiver uh, to uh, perhaps be more attractive. To, the, uh, to someone that's contemplating expansion. Have you run into that? I think we have. I, you know, when, when you look at the economic indicators and you see that Oklahoma has, you know, maybe not had really high peaks or dropped off to low valleys, but we've had more of just a steady climb. I think if I'm a businessman and I'm looking for expansion into another state, that kind of slow, steady stability gives me more confidence to come into Oklahoma and make an investment. And I think that's what our business leaders are trying to prove uh, as they are making those contacts with uh, businesses looking to expand. Let's talk about the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission. What do people need to know? You know, the Oklahoma Aeronautics Commission has become a valuable tool in Oklahoma for helping support the aerospace industry in our state. Um, aeronautics, aviation, aerospace, as, as I know the mayor knows because we've been at a number of events together, is a lot larger uh, industry in the state of Oklahoma than most people realize. Now we've had, we've had you know, some growth uh, in the last few years in the oil and gas industry, but until kind of that explosion, if you combine all the direct and indirect jobs in the aerospace and aviation industry, it's really Oklahoma's largest industry of employment with about one out of ten jobs at least indirectly related. And even when you remove the military and the commercial airlines out of it, it still rates in our top five. So it, it's an industry in the state of Oklahoma where we can try to expect growth because it reaches so many different areas, whether you're talking small plane uh, manufacturing, such as this going on even in Altus at Quartz Mountain Airways, or whether you're talking components that are um, being built in Stillwell, Oklahoma by the Cherokee Nation Enterprises, hmm. or other Department of Defense contracts that may be uh, small bolts or small airplane parts, or, or even parts that are being manufactured in Alva, Oklahoma that are plastic interiors for uh, small private airplanes. Oklahoma is doing a lot beyond just American Airlines, Boeing, and Tinker, but all of those all of those op offer opportunities for Oklahoma to bring more work to the state mm -hmm. because of uh, so much work that the Department of Defense needs in the, in the defense industry. Um, we have jobs that we could fulfill if we can provide the workforce to fulfill them. So you saw the legislature and the governor this last year uh, follow industry's recommendation and provide some incentives for engineering students who graduate. Um, to assist them as well as providing incentives to companies who hire aerospace engineers for work to be performed in Oklahoma. Um, we know that that's one way of helping stop the brain drain from people leaving and, and going to other states and it's also a way of helping raise per capita income in the state of Oklahoma. So it's a, it's a great opportunity mm -hmm. for our state, Oklahoma City, um, the Oklahoma City Chamber, Tulsa as well as the uh, uh, Oklahoma Department of Commerce are all very focused on this industry. I s serve as chair of the Workforce Development Committee with the Aerospace States Association. And that has allowed me an opportunity to talk about what Oklahoma has to offer on the national level uh, with my other lieutenant governors and some of the corporate partners that are members of that association. And I think help bring attention to Oklahoma's industry. What uh, is the work of the uh, Workforce Development Committee? What, what is the mission of the committee? You know, we have worked, last year we were, I was on a panel with the Lieutenant Governor of Alaska and the Lieutenant Governor of Vermont, and we were on a panel in, at, just outside of Washington, D.C., a panel sponsored by the U.S. Department of Labor and co-sponsored by the U.S. Department of Education, bringing together industry representatives, talking about what uh, they had on the table, work that, work that is there and we don't want to go much less overseas, but I certainly want it to come to Oklahoma. But how do we prove to industry that we have a workforce that is skilled and talented to be able to fulfill those jobs? And it is uh, definitely looking at how do we stress the need for STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math, which has been talked about for a number of years, not to the exclusion of other areas, but the fact that industry is singularly focused on 
um, young people that are coming out with those kinds of skills. Mm -hmm. That's what America, as well as Oklahoma, needs to prove that we are providing in our educational system from the earliest elementary levels all the way through college or career uh, skills or even postgraduate mm -hmm. education. And so we try to work with industry to determine what skill sets they're looking for and then promote and be supportive of those ideas, those initiatives um, in our states. There's a number of entities that are funded by state government who feel like they're shortchanged. And we could all make a list and it'd probably be a lot of overlap. Exactly. What's your priorities as far as all of those lists? What do we need to work on? Well, I think Oklahoma a number of years ago made a commitment and set out some strategic priorities that they were interested in. And I think that's why you see the development of the uh, uh, medical research area, the Presbyterian Research Park, and all of that around the uh, uh, health center here in Oklahoma City. I think you've seen a commitment in the last couple of years uh, to uh, energy industry and bioenergy and renewable fuels. I think that's going to continue to grow um, as we see the opportunities for Oklahoma to blend its agricultural industry and research with the energy industry and research that we already have. I think aerospace is definitely a priority for the state of Oklahoma and I think our two large cities, you mayor as well as Mayor Taylor, Taylor in Tulsa and uh, Secretary Shirley have all said this is an area that we need to continue to focus in. All of those require commitment to education in Oklahoma and I think that as long as we stay focused on educating our young people and prove to them we have <clears throat> jobs waiting for them in Oklahoma when they complete their education at whatever level they choose, then we put ourselves in a position to write our ticket as to what our priorities need to be. You've earlier uh, <clears throat> on the show talked about Oklahoma's kind of rich uh, investment in the aerospace and aviation industry. To what do you attribute Oklahoma's uh, rather predominant position, relatively speaking, when you talk about state size or population? We're much more involved in it than many other states, bigger and, and perhaps uh, economically more wealthy than we are. Why are we so focused successfully on aviation and aerospace? I think the commitment was made a long time ago um, when Tinker Air Force Base was s set here and then the Air Logistics Center that is compatible to the Air Force Base itself. That has kind of been um, the anchor stone, if you would, that has allowed things to develop around. When you add the American Airlines Air Logistics Center in Tulsa and realize that really most of the manufacturing in the industry is kind of around the hub of Tulsa, but it's, it's private in Tulsa with American Airlines, the commercial. You've got the uh, government air logistics center here. You have the FAA, which also provides an opportunity in another segment of the aviation industry. Then you add the original astronauts and how many of them were from Oklahoma. Oklahomans have just always had an interest in this area. When you're talking about exploration and other kinds of research, you've, you, you have um, industry that's looking for open spaces, less dense population. They're looking usually for um, good infrastructure like we have out at Burns Flat at the old Clinton Sherman Air Force Base. And they're usually looking for a consistency of wind, which is certainly something <laughs> Oklahoma has. So we have provided lots of opportunities on many different levels in all of those different uh, industry components that has made Oklahoma uh, continue to be a leader. Less than a minute to go. We've had a democratically controlled state senate for many, many years. Then it was uh, shared. And now we're going to have a Republican-led senate. Uh, you have a role in, in, in the Senate process. I almost wonder if the last two years as a shared leadership in the Senate didn't serve a necessary bridge in this uh, political turn. Well, I think it provor provided an opportunity, and uh, Senator Coffey and I have had that conversation because uh, there are more members of the state Senate who have, you know, all of them, if they are returning members, served as co-chair of a committee the last two years. And so they have an opportunity to have familiarity in areas that is not always provided, even, even if it's the same party moving on. But they have um, uh, members who have been working on uh, consensus building and have worked on in leadership roles and have had an opportunity to have more knowledge perhaps of the inner workings of procedure and process that I think will serve them well as they move into this legislative session. She is the Lieutenant Governor for the state of Oklahoma, Jerry Askins. Thank you for coming on The Verdict once again. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks again. Merry Kent, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Kent and I will have a final word right after this.
good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Welcome back. We are wrapping up a show with Lieutenant Governor Jerry Askins. Yeah, Governor Askins is always kind with her time to come tell us what's going on in the state within her realm of responsibility, and she's working hard and doing well for the citizens. We have a couple of websites to let you know about. If you'd like more information on the Lieutenant Governor and her office, you can go to ok.gov slash ltgovernor. And then our website, of course, would love to have your input. We'd like to see what guests you'd like to see on a future edition of The Verdict. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week on another edition of the verdict. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.